for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth like in heaven. Come on everyone, before the hope is gone. Tell them about the Holy One. After Amen. Go tell them now till every nation After so. Amen. You don't know how let the Spirit lead you now. After Amen. Go tell them now. Go, go, go. After Amen. Go tell them now. Go, go, go tell them now. Welcome to English Worship, everybody. Hi. Yes. Um, if you do not know me, my name is Pastor Vanessa. I'm so glad that you are here. How cool was it to have Pastor Jamie lead worship? So fun. Benaya, he can do it. He can do it. <laughs> That's the only, that's why Pastor Jamie led worship, because Benaya didn't believe him that he could do it. So now you know. <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know about you guys. I will never get tired of this bumper video. It is my favorite. And actually, we have a little surprise coming for you with this song. So I can't tell you what the surprise is. I just want to tell you. It's gonna be good. I'm so excited. So it's coming for you a few weeks. The pressure is on now that I announced it. <laughs> I have to actually do it. Uh, <laughs> um, but we are smack dab in the middle of our After Amen series where we are looking at God's command for all of us to go, go for all of us to go and tell people about Jesus, like this is who we are as followers of Jesus. We are the sent ones. We are the ones that have been empowered and commanded to go because we are the ones that have encountered the risen Jesus. And so we're spending eight weeks talking about this. Now today, today is actually kind of a funny holiday in America. So it's May 5, yeah? So in America, it's Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo, which if you're like, that doesn't sound like English, it's because it's not. <laughs> uh, it's Spanish. It's kind of a holiday that we stole from Mexico because uh, it's like a holiday to celebrate how Mexican army defeated an army, I think in France, like a French army. And so we kind of just stole their holiday because Americans like Mexican food. So today is just a day to eat Mexican food. So if you ever wanted to try Mexican food, today is your day. <laughs> but next week in America is Mother's Day, which I'm very thankful that my brother reminded me because I totally forgot. I'm sorry, Mom, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, for all of you Americans, you have one week to come up with something for your moms. <laughs> um, but... You know, moms are amazing. Moms are pretty amazing, you know? Um, and I think about Laurencia. Laurencia is an awesome mom. Like, she, she came up here with Barrett. It was so beautiful. Um, and the thing about moms, especially moms of little kids, is that they always have a lot of stuff. Have you ever noticed? Like, they carry a lot of bags with them, and these bags are like magic. <laughs> it's like, do you need a snack? Boom, I got one. <laughs> oh, are you bored? Here's a truck. Oh, here's a, a book. It's like, are you sick? That's okay. I got medicine for you. It's like you're walking indomatids, and I love it. <laughs> and some of you, you're like that. How many of you are like that? That you have a ton of stuff in your bag all the time? Yeah, you're like the walking indomatid. Yeah, that's me. How many of you walk around with nothing and hope somebody else has it? Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, I hope. I hope. Y'all need to get it together. <laughs> well, I was thinking, why in the world do moms always have so much stuff? Like, why does Laurencia always have three million bags? And the reason is, because she got... <laughs> the reason she has a million bags is because she's got kids. That's why. And those kids are going to need some stuff eventually, right? At some point, Laurencia knows at some point one of her boys is going to get hungry. 
They're going to get tired. They're going to get dirty. They're going to get bored. And so she's carrying all this stuff so she's ready to meet their needs. Like they don't know that later they're going to be hungry, but she does. And so she's prepared to meet their needs before they come. You know what I mean? I feel like God does that with us. You know, no matter how smart or wise we are, we cannot anticipate all of our needs. Now, when we look into the future, we don't, we don't really know everything we're going to need. But God knows everything. And he knows what you need right now. But he knows what you're going to need in the future, too. And because he is a good father, he gives us what we need before we need it so that when we need it, we already have it. Yeah? God uses the fact that he is all-knowing to pre-provide for our needs. And that's exactly what happens with these commands to go. That's what happens with these commands to go and tell people about Jesus. God com- God's command meet our need before we even know we have the need. Because you, you notice, God's commands, they often contradict what we want to do. They're often, contra- like, God tells us to go quickly when we actually just want a menunda. <laughs> he tells us to go tell others about Jesus when we just kind of want to chill and sit quiet. He tells us that he goes before us when what we really want to do is get ahead of God's plans. But God's ways are way higher than ours. Amen. And we see that in how his commands are rarely what we want, but always what we need. God's commands are rarely what we want, but always what we need. And we're going to see that in this next go imperative, how God is pre-providing for us, giving us what we need before we need it so that when we need it, it's ready. You're finished? Great. (laughs) Good job. So before we read today's scripture, I want to give you some context so we can put our minds into the scripture because context is king. So at this point in the story, Jesus um, has died and he has risen from the dead. Yay! Jesus is alive, right? And so the disciples, um, they met with Jesus, like Jesus showed up to them. But then Jesus kind of disappeared. (laughs) And the disciples are not really sure what's going on. They're not really sure what's happening. And that's where we're going to pick up our story in John chapter 21, verse 2. John chapter 21, verse 2 says this. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now, let's put our minds into this story, yeah? So these guys, these men, they gave up their job to follow Jesus, right? They were were fishing, or they were doing what they were doing, and then they started to follow Jesus. And they believed that Jesus was the one that God had sent to free them from this Roman oppression. They put all their hopes in Jesus, right? And then he was killed. I imagine they were crushed, right? They, all of their hopes and dreams for freedom and importance died with Jesus. But then Jesus came back to life. And he was like, oh my goodness. And then... Like, they, they touched his wounds. They saw that he was alive. Like, I imagine they were, like, riding on top of the world again, right? Their, their hopes and dreams resurrected with Jesus. And then he disappeared. Like, he showed up to them, and then he was gone. And a whole week goes by, seven days, where they don't hear from Jesus. They don't see him again. I think I would be a little bit confused. (laughs) Like, God, what are you doing? Maybe a little bit angry, maybe a little bit disappointed, but then tiba tiba, Jesus shows up again. And it's like, hey, you're here. This is amazing. And then he leaves again. (laughs) These guys kept putting their faith in Jesus and Jesus kept disappearing. They they kept putting their faith in Jesus, and Jesus kept doing what they were not expecting Jesus to do. He kept failing their expectations. They gave up everything to follow Jesus, and he wasn't here. 
Have you ever been disappointed with God? <laughs> Have you ever been disillusioned with who he is or what he does? Have you ever been angry with God? If you have, these disciples understand where you feel, how you feel. And this, in this moment, in this kind of situation, is where we see that God pre-provided for our need. Because when God sends us out, he tells us to go together. He tells us to go together. Yeah, go quickly and tell people about Jesus. Yeah, even go when it's uncomfortable and hard, but don't go alone. Go together. You know, if I'm going to be honest with you, which of course I'm going to be honest with you, <laughs> sometimes going, right, it gets confusing. It gets confusing. Fulfilling God's call for your life comes with disappointment sometimes. You know, we have doubts. We wonder if, if what God said is real. When things are really hard or, or we just don't know what to do, it's easy to think, did God really tell me to do this? Did, did God really tell me to go here? Did God really tell me to reach out to these people? And you know, at times we have encounters with God where God is so real, like, we live for those encounters, right? Where, where you're just praising and you just feel the presence of God and you hear his voice and it's amazing, but sometimes God is silent. And you don't feel anything. We pray and nothing happens. We try something that worked before, but it, it's just not working right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Have you ever felt like that? Kind of like Pastor James said last week, like, the Christian walk, it's, it's not always rainbows and unicorns. But you know what? Jesus knew that. He knew that. He knew that when he told his disciples to go and tell everyone about him. He knew that when he told us to pick up our cross and follow him, which is why he met our need before we needed it, because Jesus did not send out his disciples to do it alone. He sent them out together. And if we want to live lives that are effective for the kingdom of God, we need to go together. Because we don't want to just sit here and listen to church and like go about our business. No, we want to live effective lives. We want to live lives that make a difference in the world. And if we want to do that, we can't do it alone because we won't make it. We won't make it through the hard times alone. And believe me, hard times are coming. You are maybe in the middle of one, and if you're not, praise the Lord for that. Get as much strength as you can, because one is coming your way. Accomplishing anything of value is kind of come with setbacks. All of you guys who are doing your thesis know that right now. <laughs> if you want to do something valuable, if you want to gain a new skill, if you want to grow in some area, it's going to come with setbacks. Even more, because what we're talking about is rescuing people from darkness to light. Rescuing people from eternal death to eternal life. That is a big deal. And it's going to come with some setbacks. But also, you know, the best things in life are made better when we share them. Because, like, when you do something great, what is the first thing you do? You go tell somebody. Yeah, that's why Insta stories exist. You know, like we want to other people to share in our goodness. We want other people to celebrate with our wins. The good things get better when we share them. The hard things get doable when we share them, right? And so living effective lives will come with difficulties, but it will also come with victories. And our good heavenly father pre-provided for the good and the bad for the hard and the easy, for the joyful and the mourning, when he told us to go together. When he told us to go together. So that we can accomplish things. So that we can have effective lives in this world. And we see this pattern over and over and over and over in scripture. In Mark 6, this is where Jesus sends out his disciples. It says this, uh, Mark 6, verse 6 says, then Jesus went from village to village teaching the people, and he called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two. 
giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He didn't send out his disciples to go alone. He sent them out together. Same thing happened with Paul. Um, when Paul was sent out, the leaders in the church of Antioch were having this prayer meeting. And in Acts 13, we read, One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Paul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on the way. The Holy Spirit was commanding these men to go, but it wasn't just Paul. We think, oh, Paul was like this lone wolf. He was, a bit, he was never alone. It was always Paul and Barnabas or Paul and Silas. It wasn't just one disciple. It was two by two. They were always sent out together. And you know, God, our God is so good. He is very intentional about giving us personal missions. Yeah? He's very intentional about, like, he has a very distinct plan for your life, for you. But we were never meant to work out our personal missions alone. We have a personal mission, but we were never meant to work out our personal missions alone. And that's why here at English Worship, we say that we want to help you discover your God-given purpose in God's global plan. Your life is part of a global plan. It's kind of like a puzzle piece. Does anybody like to do puzzles? Yeah, you like puzzles? Most of you don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my, I feel like I'm good if there's maybe 200 to 500 pieces. After that, I just cannot. <laughs> but if you look at a puzzle piece, if I look at one puzzle piece, I'm going to see a few shapes maybe, some colors, I could take a guess at what the picture is, but by itself, it's kind of useless, right? If I start putting more puzzle pieces next to it, I start getting a little bit more of the picture. And if I put more and more puzzle pieces next to it, then I start seeing the picture that this puzzle was made to reflect. There's a picture that this puzzle was made to reflect. There is a God that you are meant to reflect. And you reflect part of him on your own. But when you start aligning your life with other people and you start going together, a fuller picture starts to be reflected. And the thing that you were created to do is done better when we do it together. Each of us has a unique purpose. That puzzle piece has a unique purpose in that puzzle. We're giving a specific command to go and to tell people about Jesus. No one can do that part for you. But if we want to live effective lives in the kingdom of God, we need to go together so that we can accomplish this personal mission surrounded by others who are also accomplishing their personal missions. Now, if you look at the disciples' lives, um, it's quite encouraging, honest, like it's kind of really cool to see how they, they took this uh, going together. But it's honestly <laughs> kind of convicting. <laughs> Because the way that they took this command to go together, it's a lot more involved than I normally do it. Um, when Jesus was being crucified, right, through the whole thing, what did the disciples do? They ran away, right? They ran away. They kind of scattered. What did the disciples do after Jesus died? They met together. They met together. When all of their hopes and all of their dreams and all of what they knew about God was shattered, they didn't isolate. They met together. We could learn from that. The disciples were in the middle of their confusion, of their disappointment. They saw Jesus, but they didn't understand his plan. They believed in him. They had moments of encounter with him, but then they felt far away because he wasn't here. He, he hadn't given them instructions yet on what to do. And in the middle of all of that, they met together. You know, there's something really beautiful in the verses that we read at first. Peter, before Jesus, was a fisherman. That's what he did. Right? So then Jesus came and he found him and it's like, oh, hey, come follow me. And Jesus gave up his fishing. But now Jesus wasn't here. So Peter went back to the thing he knew before. Right? He didn't understand God's plan in this moment. 
So he went back to what he understood. And did his friends yell at him for not having enough faith? Did his friends shame him for turning his back on Jesus? Did, did his friends try to cheer him up by giving him a pep talk and said, just keep going? No. No. The disciples went fishing with him. They understood his pain, his confusion, his disappointment, and they joined him in it. They didn't just go together in the good times. They stayed together in the hard times. And you know, so many times when we have doubts about Jesus, we take our doubts about Jesus to people who don't believe in Jesus. So many times when we have doubts about Jesus, we tell it to people who don't believe in him, and so they feed our doubts with their doubts. So many times when we're frustrated with God, we complain about it in our social media, or we take it to people who have given up on God. But how are they going to be able to help me with my doubts and frustrations about God if they don't know God? The healthiest way to process our doubts and frustrations with God is in godly community. The healthiest way to process those doubts and frustrations, which are going to come, they're going to come. But the best way that we can, the best thing we can do with them is to take them to godly community. The disciples understood Peter's doubts because they had the same doubts. They understood his frustration with Jesus because they were also frustrated with Jesus at his silence, at his going away. And and that is exactly why Jesus told them to go together. Jesus knew they would need each other to go through their doubts and fears. The disciples didn't have answers for Peter. They weren't trying to make him feel better. They weren't trying to just hurry him along. They were there with him together. They were figuring it out. And that is a big example for us because as we're going together through the joys and the sorrows of life, it really is a two-sided thing. Peter, sitting there, he's having doubts, he's having fears, he's having frustrations about God. And he has to be vulnerable enough to share that with the disciples. He has to be vulnerable enough to be like, hey, guys, this is how I'm feeling. We're good at hiding. We're good at hiding our fears or our doubts or our confusion or our anger at God and pretending like it's okay. But there's freedom in bringing out the truth. We talked about that in Young Pro, right? The discipline of confession, that as we, we bring out how we actually feel, how, how, how we actually are, So many of us are scared to share with others how we actually feel about God, but that's the way to do it. To get freedom, to get joy, to get encouragement as we're vulnerable and open to how we actually feel. Peter had to be vulnerable and share how he felt. The disciples had to show grace to a guy who was hurting while they were also hurting. They were also confused. They were also angry, disappointed. But they were there with Peter. And you know, many of us, we, we struggle with this because we want other people to hear our problems, but we don't want to hear theirs. <laughs> we want other people to be there when we're sad, but we don't want to be there for them when we're sad. But that's what it means to go together. Not just expecting other people to be there for me, but being there for them. These guys, they realized that they were only going to make it through if they stuck Today, together, if they went together, having doubts, if you hear nothing else, <laughs> hear this, having doubts, fears, frustrations, being angry at God, being disappointed in God, it's just part of the course. These disciples saw Jesus with their own eyes. They touched his wounds. They spent physical time with Jesus, and they still had doubts. They still had frustrations and fears. If you have that, welcome to the club. (laughs) That's what it, that's just part of walking with Jesus. 
which is why God has already prepared a way for us to go through those times by telling us to go together. He's given us the gift of each other in the middle of the hard times. It's a difference between those who fail and those who succeed is who they're surrounded by. The difference between those who fail and those who succeed is who they're surrounded by. If I want to get better at Super Smash Bros, I'm going to hang out with Benaya because he's a lot better at it than me, right? If I want to get better at coding, I'm going to try to look at Berto's uh, computer and see what's going on, right? If I want to get better at dancing, me and Rachel are going to hang out because they're better, because they're good at it. And I'm going to succeed because they have succeeded. If we surround ourselves with people who know Jesus and are committed to fulfilling his mission in this world, our lives are going to look like that too. Our lives are going to look like that too. And we will have amazing things happen because the Christian life, it it does have its uh, troubles. It has its sorrows. It is full of victory. Walking with Jesus is full of victory. Walking with Jesus is full of breakthrough. And so in the hard times, in the amazing times, we're going to have people there to make it better so that we can go together, so that we can either make it through the hard times or celebrate in the good times. We can remind each other of God's goodness. We can share wisdom or resources of, hey, I went through this before. This is what happened to me. Praise God. You know what I mean? If we're surrounded by people who want to give up, we are going to give up. If we are surrounded by people who are kate pesaja, if we are surrounded by people who don't care, we won't care. If we are surrounded by people who want to go, we'll go. If we are surrounded by people who want to make a difference in this world for the name and authority of Jesus, our lives will follow that too. And so our amazing God who knew exactly what we would need before we needed said, guys, in this mission to take over darkness, go together. Go together. The difference between those who fail and those who succeed is who they're surrounded by. So he has pre-provided for us a community of people who are committed to going together. Now let's go back to our beginning scripture because there's actually a plot twist that changes everything. It changes everything and how we read the scripture. So John 21, verse 2, Simon Peter, Thomas, Didymus, Nathaniel, and Cana, the sons of Zebedee, all these guys were fishing, <laughs> right? I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing, which, by the way, that disappointing, <laughs> right? Verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Plot twist! Jesus was there the whole time. (laughs) He was there the whole time. They didn't recognize him, but he was there. We don't just go together with others. God goes with us. We don't just go together with others. God goes with us. The disciples thought God had abandoned them, but he was right there. They had given up on their calling, but he had not given up on them. In the middle of your frustration, Jesus is there. When you don't know what you're doing, Jesus is there. When you are frustrated that the thing that you tried before stopped working and now you don't know what to do, God is there. As you're trying your hardest and you keep failing, Jesus is still there. Jesus doesn't just go before us. He walks alongside with us. He's not just preparing the way. He is the way. (laughs) And he's with us along the way. God has committed himself to go together with us. If there is ever hope for us, it is this. Jesus never leaves. He doesn't leave. He doesn't desert us in our struggle He doesn't desert us in our happy times. He doesn't leave us to figure it out alone. He goes with us. Paul said it perfectly in 2 Timothy 4, verse 16. It says, the first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. 
lame, you know? Like everybody deserted. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from certain death. Everybody left. I was in the middle of my darkest time, but the Lord stuck with me. And he gave me strength to preach the good news. If we are leaving God's mission for our life, he goes with us. As we step out in faith and move in new ways, he moves with us. When we're lost and broken, he is with us. When we are alone and everybody has abandoned us, we are not alone because he is with us. If we stay faithful in doing what God has called in, called us to do, of sharing his message with the world, we can hang on to his promise. And what is his promise? Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you this. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Be sure of this. He's with you. Be sure of this. When you're trying so hard to stay holy and you just keep failing, he's with you. Be sure of this. When you try to share your faith and people reject you, he is with you. Be sure of this. When you're trying to figure out, should I go to Esdua or should I do Esdiga? Do I need to go? He's with you. You be sure of this, when somebody breaks your heart, he's with you. Even to the ends of the age, no matter where we end up, no matter what we end up doing, no matter where the Lord brings us, he is with us. And he will give us the strength we need to preach the good news to the world. And he will give us the strength we need to live the holy lives, the powerful life, the effective life that he has commanded you to live. If we want to live lives that are effective for the kingdom of God, we need to go together, together with others and together with God. Because Jesus knew, he knew, the plan that he had for your life, it's too big for you. It's too big for you to accomplish on your own. It is too difficult for you to accomplish on your own. So he pre-provided he had the snack ready that when you would need it, it would already be there. To go together with others, to go together with him. Because there is nothing we can't do when we go together. There is nothing we can't do. That big dream that you have where you're like, I think God is calling me to do this and it feels impossible. It's not impossible because you're going with God and you're going with others. That family member that every time you try to talk to them, it just feels impossible. There's nothing that is impossible when we go together with God and with others. He has pre-provided for our need. What he has called you to do, he will help you do. The only reason that we can go together with God is because of what Jesus did on the cross. We were separated from him. Because Jesus decided to come to this earth to live a sinless life and to die a sinner's death, he took on the price of your sin so that you could be united with God, so that you could go together with him. And if you're sitting in this place today and you say, Pastor Vanessa, I have together with God. My life is still pretty far away. Today is your morning. There's hope for you. It's really not that complicated. It's going to cost you everything. But it's going to give you everything. It's as simple as ABC. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe in Jesus and commit to follow him. And the Bible says that anyone who
together with God through communion, but we're going to do it together. And so the Connect team is handing you a piece of bread. You have a uh, you have a cup on your table or on your chair. I'm going to ask you that to stand up. And you guys are going to take communion with the people in your row. Okay? So you can make a little circle with the people in your row. Because they're handing out that bread. If you need to Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your sacrifice. Thank you, God. That 
Lord God, we thank you that you are the God who hears our prayers. You are the God who knows what we need. And so you have given yourself to us to walk with us, that you are not just the destination, but you are with us along the way. Lord, I thank you that you've given us each other so that we can walk together, so that we can grow strength and encouragement, so that we can make it and have effective lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. You give us what we need. In Jesus' name. Let's end our time together with singing a song of worship to the Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, to you are all things, you deserve the glory, you are worthy of it all, you are worthy of it all, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, to you are all things, you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Deserve the glory. Whoa. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. More from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Can we just thank? the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are worthy of it all. You are worthy. Can you lift up your song of praise to the Lord? Thank you, God. We're worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. So good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be sure of this. I am with you always even to the end of the age. There is nothing too big or too hard or too far-fetched that we can't do when we go together with our God and with each other. He is worthy. He's worthy of our trust. He's worthy of us stepping out in faith and trusting that he is more than enough. And this world will be changed. And our families will be changed. And Jogja will be changed, and our school will be changed, and our workplace will be changed because we go together with the God who is above everything else. He's worthy, and he goes with us. Will you raise your hands to receive the blessing of the Lord? Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name, Jesus. We lift it up higher than anything else because that is where you belong. We put our trust in you, Lord God, that you are the God who goes with us, that you give us each other to go further and do more than we've ever imagined. Lord, I pray a blessing over my brothers and sisters with the knowledge of who you are. Lord, I pray a blessing of relationship and closeness, Lord, that from this place, we will be able to be together in the good times and the hard times. Lord, I pray that as they go into their workplace or into their school or into their family homes, Lord, that they would walk on purpose with the mission that you have called them to do. Lord, we pray for favor as we share the good news that it would fall on hearts that are receptive, Lord. We pray that you would bless their studies and their work, their finances and their friendships, that in every scope of their life, you will be glorified because you are worthy. We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So our last fun thing for today is 
You know, we're in this After Amen series to go, and maybe you need a reminder to go. And so we have a sticker for you. So when you go out, one of the Connect team members will give you a sticker, put it on your water bottle, put it on your laptop. Remember that you are not going alone. We go together. If you need someone to pray with, there will be uh, some of our leaders here in the front. And until next week, have a happy Sunday.